welcome to Olat. This week we start accompanying Ignatius on his way far from home. It will be a long journey, one that will take us from the Pyrenees to the wide, rocky and sunny flats of Aragon, from the crowded street of Barcelona across the Mediterranean Sea all the way to the golden city of Jerusalem, and then again all the way up to Paris, France, where a group of university students that included Ignatius, St. Peter Faber, St. Francis Xavier, and others will take a solemn vow to stick together and live as a group of pilgrims once again on their way to Jerusalem. We will wait with them in Venice for Galeon to cross the sea that would never leave, and we will finally land in Rome, where the great story of the Society of Jesus really began. Yet such a long journey and the many events, some of which unexpected, that will follow before the foundation of the society begins here, a few steps away from Loyola. Leaving the castle and keeping the flowing Ura River on our right side, we can notice a little shrine on the left slope of the valley, at the base of a large hill, with meadows and a few low dry stone walls to delimitate some little spots that serve still today as pastures for cows. The shrine was dedicated to the worship of Our Lady of Olaz, a Madonna whose little Gothic statue will still hangs today from the wall over the altar. If we go back to our story of last week, Inigo has just deliberated to embrace a different life, one that will bring him as a pilgrim to Jerusalem. During the long and painful recovery from his injuries, Inigo had gone through religious readings that contributed to turn his chivalric ideas toward the service of a lady who identified as the Blessed Virgin. He leaves home dressed as a nobleman, his sword hanging on his belt and riding a mule. All these material elements, the clothes, the sword, the mule, will be important in the narrative of what is going to happen from here to Montserrat, each of them becoming occasion for symbolic events on the path of Ignatius' spiritual conversion. But there is a recurrent religious and devotional and more important element that will provide Inigo with a clear, steady compass with which directing his way. This element is the devotion to the Blessed Virgin, that lady to which he wanted to put himself at the service of. We will find the Blessed Virgin a tiny step in the pilgrim's journey. Loyola, Aranzazu, Montserrat, Barcelona, where Ignatius will spend his days in the Church of Santa Maria del Mar, in Rome again, the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. And once the society was founded, for example, one of the most important elements in Jesuit schools would be again the sodality of the Blessed Virgin. While we have evidence that Ignatius stopped by to venerate Our Lady in Aranzazu and Montserrat, we lack of explicit mention of Olatz in his autobiography or any of his early biographies. In some, we don't know whether Inigo just stopped by the very day he left the castle. But we know for certain that Our Lady of Olatz was a key component of the spirituality in Aspetia. And we know that he used to practice such a devotion as his family patronized the Hermitage. Now, for popular devotion in the Middle Ages and still today, the Blessed Virgin was venerated mainly through material objects. Such objects were pieces of art like statues, icons, paintings, bas-relief decorations that functioned as the gates for a spiritual connection to the Blessed Virgin by means of prayers and contemplation. Despite portraying the very same person, these objects were not only different with each other in terms of materials, shape and image, not only they could focus on a particular aspect of the person or life of Mary, but they had also their own stories, peculiar ones and often wonderful and miraculous. Objects that were venerated and attracted worship and pilgrims because of their exceptional stories or simply because of a long tradition of veneration whose roots could not be tracked anymore. So, so to say, too ancient for not being also mythic. The fact that all the spiritual density 
is based upon statues and art crafts reminds me once again that the Catholic tradition has been consistently built upon a deep, positive relation to holy images. Representing the holy through statuary and painting has been a main gate for the flourishing of art over the centuries, because it has been always considered a highway for spiritual contemplation and prayer. We can find this in the extremely refined, symbolically sophisticated images crafted by the greatest artists to decorate the urban scenarios, as well as in the peripheral contexts where a simpler, less aesthetically ambitious art can still provide a power message to the public and steer popular devotion. Such was the case of Our Lady of Olatz, where a little wooden and polychrome statue of the Virgin encapsulated in an almond-shaped decoration attracted the devotion of Ignatius. A local tradition in Aspetia counts that while recovering, Ignatius wanted to keep window open so to watch Olatz, and whenever he could not go to the Hermitage, he intoned the Salve Regina for the Virgin of Olatz. Departing from his home, it is quite unlikely that he did not pay a visit here, in his favorite shrine. To knee as a knight and offer his service to the little Madonna he venerated already so much, before moving into a Marian pilgrimage to Aranzazu and from there to Montserrat. After visiting Olatz, please follow the Urola River a couple of miles more, and then cross it and turn uphill. At the end of a very curvy and steep road, I will see you in the shrine of our next stop, Aranzazu. Hello, pilgrims, and welcome, welcome to Olatz. This is just a very, very short journey, a small stroll up a winding road into the lush green mountains, just a small distance from Loyola, from Atspazia. This is a chapel. It's very small, it's peaceful, it's simple, and it's intimate. This is the chapel where pilgrims can visit Our Lady of Olatz. Now, Professor Cristiano Casolini has already introduced you to this place. Now, I would like to have an opportunity to reflect with you on the theme that accompanies this week's journey at Olatz. And that theme is departure. Remember, in this virtual pilgrimage, there are themes that accompany each place, and both the place and the theme are meant to be the material that you and I reflect upon each week during the journey. That means that for this week, when you have some quiet time for prayer, for reflection, for journaling, for discussion, you might center that prayer, that reflection, that journaling, that discussion on the theme of departure. Some questions for us to ponder as we spend this week of pilgrimage. In my past, how have I anticipated leaving places? In other words, is there something deeper? Is there something significant for me to consider, not only as I leave from a place, but also as I leave for a place. How shall I leave? How shall I anticipate what's to come? One thing that we learn from the young Ignatius of Loyola is that often in our lives there are certain sacred places, certain sacred place spaces that we go to in order to receive encouragement and strength. Often, we go to these kinds of places upon our return from some sort of adventure. For example, I think about how our Pope Francis will go to St. Mary Major, one of the four major basilicas in Rome, upon his return from trips abroad. Pope Francis goes to Mary in order to express gratitude for safe passage to and from, in order to express gratitude for the good spirit at work in his journey, in order to celebrate the fruit that has been born from the trip. In my own life, I recall how in 2016, 
upon returning to Boston College after traveling to Minnesota from having attended the sudden death of my mom, the very first thing that I did upon my return to the university was to enter St. Mary Chapel in St. Mary Hall. I sat down in that silent space in order to breathe, to weep, to receive comfort and healing and encouragement and rest. After such an abrupt and painful moment in my life and in the life of my family, I felt very much the need to be close to God. Well, these two examples that I'm offering are about where we might go upon the completion of a journey in order to process and experience, in order to receive grace and healing and rest and to express gratitude. Additionally, it's so important for us to reflect upon where we go and to whom we go when we're about to begin different journeys in life. Often, we don't think about such things. Usually, we're rushing, rushing in order to complete last-minute preparations because there's so many details that have to be attended to, everything that needs to be completed before we go. Still, it seems quite important to see how there is a very special grace available to us at the beginning, an anticipatory grace, that upon our departure we might receive and carry with us into the mystery of what's to come as we move along in the journeys of our lives, in the pilgrimages of our lives. When my parents would travel by car, they would always begin their journey with three Hail Marys, and then those three Hail Marys would be followed by them praying, St. Christopher, guide and protect us. St. Anne, pray for us. I remember that as a kid, I found this custom to be a little bit curious. What did praying do before a trip began? Now, however, as I look back, I'm filled with wonder and awe. And I find myself increasingly grateful for the example of faith that my parents handed on to us kids. To entrust a journey, to present a journey for blessing, for protection, to petition the Lord for the good spirit to accompany us along the way of the future. Doing so demonstrates that people of faith believe that there's more to life than meets the eye, that there is between heaven and earth intercession, involvement, accompaniment. Here at Boston College, we begin every orientation session for our students with Catholic Mass. It's a way of suggesting that at the very beginning of college, this endeavor isn't just about the here and now. The adventures of our lives are enriched by inviting God into our awareness of what's happening and what will happen, so that we find ourselves reassured in the presence of God at the moment and trusting that God will be with us as we move along into the future. Without doing this, it would be easy to feel lost, to feel afraid, alone, isolated, in the journeys of life. Who knows what it was that Ignatius of Loyola received as he would come before the image of Our Lady of Olatz, but it seems to have done something significant for him. There's something about pausing in reverence, with devotion, as we journey in life. A Jesuit from BC, Father Michael Buckley, came to present to some of us younger Jesuits during our tertianship some years ago. He was a priest filled with wisdom. And in one presentation, I remember him describing devotion as 
the palpable presence of God. Devotion is the palpable presence of God. In Olatz this week, we might ponder how we begin departures with devotion to feel the palpable presence of God with us as we enter into the mystery of the, own, of the unknown, of what is to come. How do you and I experience the palpable presence of God? We Catholics have sacramentals that help us in our quest to find God. Our faith provides us with images, with sacred spaces and places, beautiful sounds, all things that move the senses of our physical bodies and that stir us interiorly with anticipation, with confidence, with wonder and awe, ready to propel forward with the good spirit with us. Departures with devotion put us into a particular mindset, a particular heart set, to be available to the palpable presence of God in our midst, in our hearts, in our lives, in our surroundings, in the other people that we encounter along the way. This might be the key to the beginning of our striving to find God in all things. We look forward to seeing you in Arantasu next week. Remember, let's keep praying for one another on the way. And remember to participate in the community forum. Take a peek, too, in the journey tab, because we have some beautiful, beautiful entries for you to consider during this week of prayer, of journey. Thanks so much. God bless, and we'll see you next week.